Serious teachers of Reddit. What is the surprisingly smartest thing your stupidest student has ever said? Some of my 5th graders were playing with a basketball in the hallway. I told them to stop. They did for a second, then continued. I said guys, why do you keep bouncing that ball in the hallway? And one of them just looked at me and said if you were 10 you'd do it too. I was like, yeah, I guess I would. This kid isn't dumb, but most of the things he says are just because he talks a lot and likes to argue. This kid goes to a private school which is open for 11 hours every day, even though the school day runs for 7 hours. If parents need to drop their kids off early or pick them up late, they have that option. He told me that he really wanted to get a dog, but his parents won't do it because there would be no one home to take care of the dog most of the time. The rest of the conversation went like this. Me, that makes sense. Puppies and dogs need lots of attention. It wouldn't be nice to leave them home alone all day. Kid, well we could bring it to doggy daycare me every day. If someone is taking care of your dog for 8 hours every day, is that even your dog? Him, well that's what they do with kids. So real and so sad. That moment has stayed with me for a few years now. I had a band-aid on my elbow, one of the big ones, and my student was trying to work out what it was. It was a drunken fall. I said ninjas had got me. He said it sounded like an injury. I laughed out loud. While in reality it was a gin jury. Just this past Tuesday, I had a student struggling with science homework, actually math skills, but for my science class. He was almost mute about what he needed, what he didn't understand, no matter how much I tried to guide him through unit conversions. The study period was ending, and I had to let him go with little progress made. As he was packing up, he told me I'll try it again after art class. I'm usually smarter at this, after I do some art. I thought that was an interesting observation, and I asked him why he thought that might be the case. He said, I'm pretty good at art. It's easier to try hard stuff, while I still feel like I'm good at something, because I want to keep feeling like that. That's the entire educational psychology argument for fostering a sense of competency and the support of intrinsic motivation, in the fewest words possible. I actually think he's one of my smartest students, really. He just struggles to make it show on paper. Scout leader, doing first aid with some cubs, I ask one lad how do you treat a burn, and he replies with respect. When I was in first grade, we were being taught a bit about first aid. We got to the point about sterile bandages and such, and they asked if anyone knew what sterile meant. I raised my hand and said, in a puzzled tone, it means you can't make babies. I teach ESL. I had a student about 7, and we were all doing the workbook. The lesson revolved around things like big and small, old, and new, clean and dirty, as well as toys, like dolls, balls, yo-yos, and this slash that slash these slash those. It is easily one of my least favorite lessons, because it really is a lot for the young students to understand. The photo was a boy pointing to a desk with a few small, round objects on it. The girl was taking forever, but she always seemed a bit slower in class, and so I wasn't too shocked. I was checking the other student's work and figured she would finish in time and I would help her at the correction stage. Finally she makes it up to my desk and I get to the picture. The obvious answer was these are small balls. What did she have though? These are marbles. The kids hadn't even learned that word. How she came up with it left me absolutely baffled, but from that point on, I never questioned her intelligence. I figured she just knew different things, but it didn't mean she didn't understand. She clearly just spent 30 minutes racking her brain for the best word for small balls. ESL. Every day is a surprise. I was on lunch duty one day and a middle school boy jokingly said Mr. Original Sanitizer, you wanna buy me an extra? I replied with do I look like your daddy? He replied, straight faced, I don't know, you might. I ain't never met him. I bought him an extra. Edit, an extra is something extra to the basic school lunch, like an ice cream sandwich. Me, how do you know if something is alive? Them, if you can kill it. Technically not wrong. When I was teaching subtracting across zero, 
507 to 254. To second graders one kid said it's like when your mom needs milk and you go to your neighbor and no one is there, so you go to the next door. I hate the word in describing this kiddo, and it wasn't so much what she said, but did. She certainly wasn't stupid, but as an Addisk youth counselor I can say she was very low functioning. She went a wall one night out to the blue. Not one staff saw her leave. Usually when this happens, kids go do dumb kid stuff like going to a park to drink and smoke. Teenage shit. Well, we didn't see her for two days. We finally got a phone call from a person who had taken her in. 400 some miles away. When she got back to our facility she had this nervous look, knowing I was gonna scold her. I didn't. I was too fucking impressed. I asked her how she did it, and she said she kept hopping buses. I guess none of the drivers had the heart to kick her off, so there she went. I took a very big risk in the fact that I congratulated her on her journey. Her eyes lit up when I told her she had managed to travel farther than any kid that had ever gone a wall. She never did it again and actually graduated the program with Susis. Still a budger, but I'll always remember that budger. I don't know if this counts, but I was teaching a public speaking class. It was mostly 9th grade. They were all nervous about their first big speech, and I tried to ease their nerves by saying, I promise giving a speech won't kill you. Then, some kid shouted, do you know how many people in history have died while giving a speech? I mean he had a point. Probably my favorite answer in the thread. Yeah. I couldn't even talk for probably 5 minutes. I just smiled, nodded, and let out a chuckle. I think said something like, not in my classroom. I probably shouldn't say that with all the school shooting crap going on in the US. I teach first grade so many not as dramatic as other replies. I had a kid who is kind of never quite paying attentions. We read a dinosaur book and we're answering very basic first grade questions in the back of the book. It literally had a brachiosaurus and said, the dinosaur's legs are long, b short. He pretty much got stuck here and didn't move on. To me, it was the easiest question in the book but some of the students are low level English learners, so it is possible he just couldn't understand the words long or short. After like 7 minutes of doing my rounds and assisting other students, I came back to him. He had written in. C. Long and short are both opinion words. Used to teach chess to elementary level kids. Would run chess camp over the summer 20 to 40 kids come in every day for a full school day, but every period is basically a chess class. Lasts a week. On the first day, I would tell kids they need to lose to get better, which is true in a game like chess, especially in the beginning. I would tell them you have to lose 50 games before you can improve in chess. Well on about day 3 I'm walking from the field to the class and see one of my students, second grader, walking the other direction and ask him offhand how's chess going? And he responds well, I've lost all of my games, so I guess I'm doing great. When I was teaching grade 5 a few years back, I had a student who really struggled academically and misbehaved a lot. During one of his punishments which was washing dishes with me from our morning breakfast time, I straight up asked him why he kept getting into trouble. The boy admitting that he just knew that if he misbehaved he would get to spend time with me 1 colon 1 and we would talk about life and his hobbies and such. I found out later on that his father had been incarcerated for pretty much the entirety of the boy's life. So, the stupidest and most misbehaved kid in the class was actually just playing the system the whole time and really just needed a positive male role model in his life. After that, I told him he didn't need to act up in order to spend time with me. He could just ask for extra responsibility and I would give it to him. He was, mostly, better behaved after that. I miss him, a lot. Elementary school. I worked in the school admin office for a while. We had a cop come in to speak to the kids, basically to warn them on the dangers of strangers and random people speaking to them in the street. The cop was great and told the kids how they should always be careful and that some bad men might take them away from their mummies and daddies. One kid puts his hand up and asks the question so what will happen if we go with one of these stranger men. The cop wasn't prepared for that question and just said how sad it would be and how his parents would miss him. A few days later a new buzzword was going around the school which phonetically sounded like pedophile. 
the kid had looked up online or spoke to someone and then told the other kids and schools about what pedophiles do. It scared the hell out of some of the kids and the principal had to come to each class to calm the kids down.